Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button and let's begin. The first story, manager a-hole didn't think sales reps were needed, forced me out, so I caused a million dollars in profit loss. The second story, greedy landlord tried to screw poor college students on rent. The third story, jerk contracts people to do computer work, starts off small, then burns them on their final big project. And the first story is, that time I got pushed out of a job. A few years ago, I got hired at a big company. Let's call it Company X. Up until then, I had only been a research scientist working in microbiology, but I needed more money, so I took the job as a technical sales rep. I was hired to do sales and technical support for scientific research reagents. Thing is, I was hired to do sales for government and governmental institutions. The job was okay. I interacted with a lot of the country's leading scientists and built a reasonable network and some cool friendships. The county had been in crisis for a long time and getting worse every year, and my sales were becoming more difficult because the government wasn't providing public universities for adequate or any money allocations to keep science programs and faculty stocked. And as the economy crumbled further, the government's institutional labs from various sectors also started having serious problems, and almost everybody switched to Indian or Chinese chemicals, which were a lot cheaper than mine. As the months passed, I was only able to get a few big contracts and sales, even though I managed to pull a few feats that got me commended, as no other sales reps had been able to do what I pulled off. And yet I got yelled at a lot for not meeting my objectives. My manager was a complete tool 100% of the time. I did very comprehensive national market study to show my assigned markets were SH and that I needed to be reassigned to a different segment, but was repeatedly told that there was an extremely high potential in the public sector, so I should be lying and go hunt, and blah blah blah. I don't think I was a particularly excellent salesman given my lack of experience, but I think I did okay where I could. Having also the country's most expensive reagents without much flexibility also didn't help. In time, my manager became increasingly aggressive and demanding more and more ridiculous sales targets from me in the public sector month after month. This eventually turned into yelling and threats of physical violence. So yeah, F that. I looked for another job and surprise I quit. I immediately got a job at, let's call it Company Q a distribution outfit that also had some production of some chemical intermediaries. Q bought some products from X. I knew them already somewhat. It was a nice, quiet, private lab situation. Very comfortable. Reasonable increase in pay included. So yay me. A week or so after I started at Q, the colleague from X who was also getting pushed hard also had enough and quit. And another sales rep was fired a few days after for some BS reason I can't remember anymore. Sketchy, but okay. I could only feel bad for them. A few days later, I was told by a friend that still worked at X that this had all been a part of a company-wide coordinated effort from the management to get rid of various sales reps from several departments because they saw that the markets were slowly decaying and would rather just have distributors do sales rather than keep paying us to try. So they used us for a few years, only to update the customer database and then got rid of us. I was quite angry and had been looking for a way to screw over my old manager somehow for treating me like SH for about a year and a half. Mwahaha! I had used the private employee misbehavior reporting system to report that my ex-manager had been banging a product manager who got the job only because she had an affair with him. But the complaint got routed to the local compliance officer and exactly nothing came of that because my manager and the officer were buddies. Bummer. But there was still hope. When I joined Company Q, I learned that they had rights of distribution of a certain industrial chemical from another company. Call it Company E. Pretty much the only product that this company produced in any significant amount. Five years before or so. Then came Company X at an international level and signed a global deal with E and took the distribution rights. Company E tried their best to stay with Q for local distribution in our country because Q had know-how in that market that X did not, but the contract forced the transfer to X anyway. To appease Company E, the contract stipulated that X gained control of importing but had to continue to sell the chemical to Q for distribution, hence avoiding the lack of know-how of Company X. And so it was, X imports and sells at a particularly small margin to Q, and Q sells to final customer. Not a great deal, but Q management were happy they were not cut out completely, and thought they only lost some of the margin. But over five years, they saw growing hostility from X, and not much they could do about it. Seeing an alternate supplier also proved problematic, because the only suppliers at that price level were only much lower quality suppliers, and high quality was important for this product. From my time at X, I knew that they were also selling the chemical directly and at sometimes lower prices than what was sold to Q, which meant the margins set were also not being honored, and to any customer that came asking for it. After my complaint at the old company went nowhere, there was a website to check on the status of the complaint. 
I told my manager from Q all of it and that X wanted to cut them out completely. All with the best intentions, of course. That same morning, that conversation triggered a call from my manager from Q to the guy from E and told him what was up because that was not part of the deal they had agreed to when transferring distribution rights from Q to X. The guy from company E, who had been in business for a long time with Q in the past, seemed quite happy with this problem and asked us to get proof of this so they could trigger a non-compliance clause in the global contract. Of course, this evidence could not come from me because I could get into trouble. Manager Q sent his sales reps digging and they came up with all sorts of copies of sales receipts, delivery notes, and quotes of the chemical from company X. Something that technically shouldn't have happened because Q retained exclusivity of final sales and the prices each paid. There was a complaint, high level meetings and some lawyer action, yada yada yada. After four months or so, this eventually led distribution rights going back to Q exclusively. The kicker, with the transfer, X lost about 1 million US dollars in profit from the sales of this commodity alone. Q in return gained most of it, and as a result I got a big thank you and a lot of budget to equip and re-equip my new lab. I moved to a different lab a few years ago, but I'm still in contact with my old staff. They're still kicking A and loving one of the best equipped labs in the country. The second story is, greedy landlord went one step too far. Background College student living in a college city, lived in the dorms first year, then in an apartment in the next years. In our college town slash city, you had to pay a finder's fee to the current tenant to move in. This was essentially paying them their deposit when you moved in, as there was not any formal rental contract. There were literally flyers up listing apartments with rent and the finder's fee on campus, so this was standard practice. Anyway, a buddy and I moved into one apartment middle of our second year, in a triplex where two of the three roommates had moved. All three in one of the apartments. The third guy had been living there for a number of years, had done undergrad and grad school there, and was the contact point for the landlord. We paid him and he paid the full rent. Note that this was not a sublet, just that we paid in total in one check. This is important. So our third roommate moves, graduates and hands over the utilities, landlord info, etc. to me to handle before the start of summer. He had gone through a few landlords over this time and had not had a new lease or contract for years. So I take over and pay the bills during the summer. I became the POC, utilities in my name, important later for legal standing, and I was paying the rent, also important. Note you were stuck paying summer rent to keep a good apartment close to campus. So we paid for the apartment for the summer. Start of the chess match. So fall hits and school starts. We get a call from the landlord. He said he didn't know anything about us and wanted us out. If we pay more rent, we can stay. So our rent goes up from $750 to $900 with 10 days verbal notice. So we suck it up since we can't move now. Too late. And we paid all summer just to have the place. And the extra was not that bad. Keep in mind this was when minimum was $325 an hour. So $150 is still a hit for three poor college students. Yes, this is from a while ago. So then as the semester gets to an end, the landlord then decides he wants to raise the rent to like $1,500 or $2,000 or he will evict us. He gives us 30 days notice to get out over Christmas break if we will not pay. None of us could cover that amount, two to three times where we started. We were all on financial aid. Well, after talking to some people, we find out we should look into the rent control laws. Check. Well, guess who is not properly registered or followed any rent control laws? Yep, this landlord. So we spend $500 on a lawyer and end up going to rent control court. Guess what the rent control board hates? Yep, greedy landlords that clearly break the law. Coming out of this hearing, we win big. Due to the rent check slash utility billing, we're found to be tenants, even though we do not have a written contract. That was our biggest worry on our claim. Landlord is punished for not being registered or in compliance for years. Well, really at all. So our rent is reduced to the original rent control amount, and it is retroactive. So our rent becomes $300 from the day we moved in. Oh, and we cannot be evicted just because the landlord feels like it. So doing the math, he owed us $6,000 in overcharges for the past year and would only collect 30% of the current rate going forward. And of course, he also had a bunch of fines to pay the board. I don't remember, but I think it was more than what he owed us. So our new rent of $300 gets paid into an escrow account. It'll get released once he pays the fines and us our $6,000. Well, like six months go by and I don't think he paid the fines. He did not pay us and he's not collecting rent. Finger is still on the king, but he's not done yet. Obviously renting any of the other units will be a problem for him rent-wise. So he then decides to play by the rules and serve an eviction notice for us based on one of the permissible rules. He's moving into the unit slash taking it off the market. We know it's total BS, but it's in the rules. We can call him on it, but then we'll start spending money on a lawyer battle he can outlast us on. He has money and is losing money every day we're there, so we propose a compromise. And the king falls. 
We settle out of court. He agrees to a one-year lease with us at $300 a month. We'll move out in a year, end of school slash graduation for all three of us. He also signs over the escrow account to us and waives all owed rent to date. In the end, we saved $16,000. It was glorious, and we got 100% of our deposit, finder's fee as part of our settlement agreement, and we stayed until graduation. Oh, and he did not rent out the other unit during this time, so he was out an additional $10,000 to $15,000. Keep in mind this was an investment property, so I assume the property value dropped for the reduced income. Just looked up property history on Zillow, and three years after this occurred the triplex sold for $300,000, so the rent collected from the units would have covered a mortgage, so he just wanted to print money. The last story is, pay me now, or… So I was a general purpose computer tech back in the wild west days of computing. I worked for a large computer chain store, and met lots of really nice people and did my best to help them make their systems do everything the salesman had promised it would do. One of these customers was a guy, CD, that ran what I'll call a fringe business, called a buyer's group, that basically provided his clients a discount with a number of large medically related provider companies. The providers offered these discounts because CD paid them immediately and then collected from his clients, pocketing a portion of the discounts. Legit, but meh, I'm not a huge fan of debt shuffling business. CD had hired a contract programmer that I'd recommended to set up an accounting system for his operation. She did a great job on the design, and it worked well, but for some reason she refused to continue to work with them. I'd find out why later. CD contacted me and asked me to do some mods on his system. I figured it was because the contract programmer was too expensive, so I thought money and did a few small jobs for him and was paid reasonably promptly. Fast forward a couple of years and CD wants some pretty major changes. I was in a different job and had some vacation coming, so I agreed to do it for a flat payment of about $1,000. Pretty good money for back then. Vacation comes, work complete, no payment. Arguments about problems with my work, but no request to fix them. Oh well, new girlfriend was keeping me pretty busy. I've got better things to occupy my mind. A couple of years later I'm still doing consulting side gigs. This one is with Dr. Huge Money that's setting up an insurance company and wants some GIS crunching done. I did a bang up job for him. Just as I was about to leave, I heard him mention an appointment with my old friend CD, who was going to be part of this venture. I gave him my best, oh man bro face and said well, I hope you have better luck collecting from him than I did. I'd guess that the doctor was motivated to discuss this because he wanted to ensure that CD was a sound business partner. Broaching a subject like that during negotiations could well put the other party off balance. The doctor was a pretty smart guy. Doc drills me for details. I oblige, except the price grew to $2,000. The very next day I get a call from CD saying, oh everything you did was great, we just needed documentation on the project. Promise he'd get it as soon as I was paid. Received a check a few days later, cashed it at his bank. I justify the squeeze as interest and attorney's fees. Back then I never put anything in writing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.